hopefully if you've made it to this video, that means that you've successfully completed the installation and setup process for the warp drive tool on your PC, and now it's time to switch over to the website and to learn how that works. So we're going to go into, the first thing is configuration. I'm not going to go into all of the configurations right now because for most of these the defaults work just fine and it's really only a matter of preference once you get a little deeper into the tool to go changing those, but we'll have a, another video for that later that goes into some more of the details, but this is just the basics to get you up and running. So the things that you're going to want to know in configurations, very first thing is the most important one I'm going to skip to the bottom is this PC screen resolution. You have to set this correctly or nothing works. This tool works on the images that are located in the different resolution folders and it's based on the resolution of the monitor that you're using. And this is going to be the resolution of your main monitor which is the location where the Star Trek Fleet Command game will run. So in this case we're on a 1920-1080. So that is the most important configuration because absolutely nothing works if you don't have that correct. Aside from that, I'm just going to touch on a couple of these that you're going to want to know from the beginning. Repair destroyed ships, this is just a yes or no, and it is what it says. If you have this set to yes, then once your ship is destroyed, it will repair it, speed it up, and send it back to do whatever it was doing before. If you have it set to no, it will click the, the repair button and ask for help and then disable the ship. Use warp tokens. If you're going to a system such as say a Borg system that requires warp tokens, you can set this to yes and then you can choose how many that you want it to use. So if you have eight or nine warp tokens and you don't want it to burn through all of them, you only want it to make two or three trips, you can set this to any number that you want. Skip through these other configurations for now because as I said, the defaults work very well. These are just some minor preferences and we'll have another video to cover those details later. Now we're going to skip over to plans. And from the plans page with add new plan. And we're going to give it a name. This is anything you want just so that you can identify it. And the priority is used for if you're creating sequential plans. If you have an uncommon plan, which is what this account is, everything can just be one because you're only going to be running one plan at a time. If you set up sequential plans on a higher level account, you can set priority one, two, and three, set them all to active, and then the tool will execute them in that order. So now that we have our name and information in there, we're going to just click update plans so that it saves it and then go to edit and this is where we're going to put in the actual detail for this plan. You see there's up to eight ships here which is as much as the game has however depending on the level of your subscription only either one, four, or eight plans will be able to be activated. With the uncommon plan you have one ship available. You can fill something in here but once the tool is launched it will only actually load the orders for one ship. So we're going to add ship one and select active inactive. Well, we're only doing one ship, so there's no point in having an inactive one. And then the system, we just type the first couple letters and it will pop up everything that's available. We're going to choose a Delphi and then grinding and swarms and then the type of ship that we're going to be attacking. So interceptors. And number of hostiles killed, or you can do zero for unlimited. If you put zero, that will do one of two things depending on the setting that you chose for repairing the ship. If you choose zero and your repair ship configuration is no, then it will attack as many hostiles as it can until the ship blows up and then it will stop. If you have repair ship at yes, it will keep repairing and attacking, sending it back into that same system until you turn off the tool. So in this case, if you have a daily for 50 swarms per day and you want to just do that many, I would always recommend doing a little bit more than what your daily or event calls for because once it clicks attack, it thinks that it succeeded. If somebody else gets to that hostel before your ship gets there, then it doesn't know it. And so it might count 50 and you really only got 48. So 
if we're going to get 50, I'd just maybe go to 55. And then send to system at startup. If you are already in the game setting up your ship and your officers and you want to just send it to that system and get it started on its own, it'll save it a few seconds at the beginning. Otherwise, you can set this to yes and it will send this, the ship to that system right from the beginning. And then recall when complete, if you have this turned on, then obviously once the 55 hostels are hit, it will return home. If you have this set as no, then it will just leave it floating in the system. And Dodge Hostels is intended for the systems either, say if you're doing some data mining in a system where there's always an attacker coming after you when you enter the system, or if you're not yet tri-locked. If you enter one of the faction areas, that you don't yet have that status and you get that hostel that comes at you. This is intended for that. This is in beta and it is currently, I will say, not perfect. So if you're very protective of your ship getting blown up on accident, I would leave this as no and dodge the hostel yourself before you set your ship to grind. Since there are no hostels to be dodged in swarm systems, that's not something we need to worry about today. And so we submit. And now you can see in the assignments tab everything that this ship is assigned to do. If you have an upgraded account and you have multiple ships that you can assign, you can add ship, do the same process, and you'll end up seeing a list of all of your different assignments. You can edit these at any time, or as I mentioned before, you can add multiple plans so that you can just keep them and swap them out so we're going to add another plan. I'm going to give this new plan a name. We'll call it gas mining. And once again, the priority doesn't matter. And update plans. This will save it. It's easy to forget that step. And now you see we have our two plans. And we're going to add a ship. Same process before, active, we're going to choose a system that has gas in it, mining this time, and then you can choose the resource that you want to mine. And here you're going to decide if you want your ship to go OPC or if you want it to be recalled once, once it's over the protected cargo. And return to system would be once it hits protected cargo max and gets recalled, do you want it to then go back to the same system and continue mining? And in most cases, you're probably going to want that to be yes. Send system to startup is the same as it was on the grinding. Recall when complete. Dodge hostels, I already explained that one. All right, so now we're going to go back to our plans. I'm going to activate one so that we can jump over to actually demo the tool working. If you activate more than one and you only have the uncommon subscription, then it will only take the first one. It will only actually load the first one into the tool. We are basically ready to go here. You see we have an on-off switch in the website. So if you're away from home, you can control this from any computer or your phone or tablet. You can turn it off, change what plan you want to be running, turn it back on. You can even go into the game in the middle in between reset your ships obviously if you're you know attacking swarms and then going to mining you're going to want to swap your ships out in between so you can control all of this from there however before you can do that you're going to need to turn on the at least the monitor so this monitors the website and it lets the tool on your PC know that you've made changes to the website and that it needs to then make changes to what the tool is doing you can also manually start it from here. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to do it from the website because most of the time you're going to be away. And that's the, the beauty of this tool is you don't have to be sitting at your computer to do it. So as long as this monitor is running, then any changes that you make from the website are going to be reflected here. So I've already gone into the game and set up my ship. And so now I'm just going to turn on warp drive from here. And we're going to flip back over to the PC GUI and you can see here it's 
sprung into action. Warp drive status received active, and this is just going to print a trail of all the things that it's doing in the background. But you can see it launches the game. And our ship has arrived at its destination, and we'll see it begin to look for hostiles. What it does here is looks for an interceptor, as we told it to first, and when it clicks on it, it then double checks to make sure that it is in fact a swarm hostile and not, say, for example, a player ship accidentally. And then it goes to attack, and then it immediately begins looking for another one. It does look at the distance the ship is from itself, and so it can, as quickly as possible, then retask to a new hostile once it's done attacking. And it does look for the closest ship as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and stop. And you can see that it has now stopped and it's still monitoring. So that's what the monitoring here means. I could have stopped this from the website. And as you'll be able to see, if I go to any other page, I'm going to say, look at assignments. It will show that the status is off. And because it has updated from whenever you click a button here, it updates on the web page. If you update it on the web page, it clicks the button here. So we're going to go to plans and deactivate and then we're going to activate the gas plan that we created earlier. I'm going to go ahead and recall this ship and pause the recording until my ship returns. I'll swap it out and send it to a gas system so we can take a look at the mining function. And we've arrived at our destination. I'm going to activate warp drive. We're just activating the gas plan that we set up earlier. And you can see here, it has been now activated on the tool. I could have done it from here, but I uh, like to pretend that I'm somewhere warm and not sitting here in front of my computer. So we did it from the website. And now the game is starting up. And the first thing it should do is look for a mine to put our ship on. Mining is not nearly as fun to watch as hostile grinding, so we're not going to stay and, and watch this for very long. But what the warp drive will do is it will sit here and watch it deplete its node. It'll reset it. It will keep an eye on the cargo load. And since we set it in our configuration not to go OPC, as soon as it sees it go OPC, it will recall it back to the station and send it back again to fill up again. In the meantime, while it's waiting on the mining to happen, it will continue to collect chests and send helps to your teammates, etc. And if you have an upgraded plan where you have multiple ships running, it can be mining and grinding and doing some more mining and every ship that you have available to you. I'm going to flip back over to the tool, actually, just for fun. We're going to stop it from the website because we can. And we'll flip back over to the visual here, and you can see it has stopped. We're back to just monitoring. Over here on the summary, you can see how long it's been running, how many hostiles it's attacked. It's not attacked any hostiles since we started this particular plan, so that's why it says zero. Hostiles today, it's done 12. It did those while we were doing the previous plan. It tells what the kills per minute was, and then how many rewards it's claimed, how many helps it's sent, We've reset some miners, various things that it's done throughout the day. Additionally, this same information is available to you at any time on the website. If you go to the stats page, so if you are not here to be able to see your computer running, you can check in on Warp Drive and see how it's doing. You can see if the status, if it's currently running, we obviously just turned it off, so it's not. You can see the error status, that there are none. Hostile count, all the same information that you have in the tool itself. And you can this updates every minute or so while the tool is running. And so you can keep an eye on everything that it's doing. This concludes our second and final introductory video. We encourage you to check out our up
upcoming videos, which will demonstrate some of the more advanced features of the warp drive system. But at this point, if you have already completed the installation and configuration video and set up your own system, you should be ready to get your warp drive off the ground. Thank <laughs> you.